Um, you know, the last time I saw Dumisani, he came to my house. Um, it, it is always the tradition of Dumi. He came with a, with a blue label for me. <laughs> we, we didn't know that it was a parting shot for a while. <laughs> and uh, we, 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 talking about investigative journalism, uh, Dumi has always stood out for me. He's, one of the best investigative uh, journalists that we have in this country. So when, when people make reference to me as an investigative journalist, sometimes I find it very uh, discomforting because I know there are people like you who have done a lot of work. And, and, uh, but we had a time where our country is being looted left, right, and center by the Managua regime. And we are also in a time where people are afraid to tell the truth as it is, to bring out information and put it out there. The Honorable Member of Parliament has mentioned some of the reasons. We have a captured uh, public media, which has not delivered uh, or discharged of its uh, responsibilities for over 30 years, as long as I can remember. And we have a private media where journalists are badly paid. Um, during our time, when I just finished the training at Arari Polytechnic, the amount of money that we were getting as students at Arari Polytechnic was enough to look after our parents, um, although it was just a stipend. Uh, I remember I got my internship at the Horizon magazine. <coughs> Uh, with Ed Moyes and uh, Jacob um, uh, Tambara. And um, whatever we got, we could look after our, our, our families and we could send siblings to school. But today's journalists are not able to do so because of a, 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 an economy that has literally collapsed. So whilst I understand those who blame the journalists. I also look at why the journalists find themselves in such a situation. Um, the, the, the disclosures that I did that put me into trouble with Nagawa were not unique. They had actually been reported on by uh, Zim Live and uh, I think Newsday had done, done a piece as well. Yeah, they've cheated on some yeah, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Alias yeah, and Elias Mambi done something, yeah. The only unique thing that I did was to look at the story and say, there is much more to this story than what I've read so far. Uh, and then that's when I started, I started digging. But the way I started digging, it required me to have tools, which at times some journalists don't have, just to have a normal internet connection at home. A lot of journalists don't have that. So it's difficult for them to, 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 to do the work that they're supposed to do. So for instance, there was a very false narrative whilst I was in prison that I was getting information from people in government. I never got information from people in government. What I simply did was to look at what Elias Mambo had written, and then he gave me one document which had been signed off by the Permanent Secretary of Finance and then I started engaging, and some of you will remember, I started engaging the permanent secretary on Twitter. And he started responding by giving me false uh, information. Without, uh, he didn't realize that I actually had been given that document by Elias Mambo. And then when I looked at drugs, it had been registered, uh, supposedly, in the UAE. What I simply did was to go to the UAE covered registry and put the name drugs, and there was nothing. And I went to the covered registry in uh, Hungary, where the money had been wired, and there was nothing. And then I spoke to the FT uh, journalist uh, responsible for Southern Africa, Joseph Kotler, who had done some investigations as well. And in Switzerland, it was just a shelf company. Then I looked at some of the documents uh, that were now being released by journalists. And I looked at Namibia, and uh, this company was supposed to have been registered in 2018. 
And then I went to the Kamban Registry in Namibia. It had been registered actually in 2015. And I went to the Namibian Finance Ministry. The company had not paid any taxes since inception. It was just a shelf company. And I then looked at what it had brought in and uh, asked some of the guys who were linked to the company. And then we discovered that it had brought stuff from China. <coughs> it paid $380 for that stuff in China. And uh, yet it had built the Zimbabwe government $67,000 for stuff that they paid for $380,000. That is industrial looting. And some of the things that were now happening, people were panicking. The president's family panicked. They issued a statement saying they had nothing to do with this company. And this statement was issued via George Charamba. And the same company issued a statement again the same day saying that they had nothing to do with what they call the first family. And then the flag went up for me. I said, there's no Swiss company or a, 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 a Swiss executive who talks about the first family. It's a Zimbabwe phenomenon, you know. And I looked at the two letters and did some textual analysis and then realized that they'd been written by one person. And then I challenged George Aramba and he didn't respond. So, I'm saying this because I want to explain that there's nothing uh, special that I did. I just happened to have a huge following on social media, and I just happened to manage to dig a little deep more than others had done. In fact, I remember talking to, to, to Dumisan at the time, saying to Dumi, I haven't done anything. Uh, I'm just looking at things that should have been looked at, but we were not looked at. And for me, investigative journalism, as I've said before, is something, it's not my terrain. Um, but for me, at this point in time, is the much needed journalistic tool in this country. Because we have, a, a, as I was saying at an, uh, during an interview, 2,000 Zimbabwean women die giving birth every year in this country. And 2,000 Zimbabwean women dying every year is like 15 jumbo jets crashing every year and killing Zimbabwean women, pregnant Zimbabwean women. And there is a reason why that is happening. It's because money is being looted. We have the biggest hospital in this country. It's a rare hospital, contrary to what people say about Paris. Paris is not the biggest. It's, it's a group of hospitals, but the biggest hospital is a rare hospital, which is now Salimdab Hospital. It only has two uh, maternity uh, theaters. They were built in 1977, and only one of them is working. The investigations that I, I started following on drugs, they involved six million. That is what they wanted to loot. Yet, Arara Hospital, Paranyatko Hospital, Kituwiza Hospital, Mpilo Hospital, UBH Hospital, and Engu Chen, the six of them, they only require 50 million a year to run smoothly without any shortages. Only 50. But these guys who threw me into prison wanted to steal 60 million of COVID funds. That money could have run all our hospitals for the whole year. And yet for the past three months, nurses are not going to work. People are dying. There's a silent genocide. So I'm so excited about this project that Dumi and his team has started because for me now, I can, I, can, I can read whilst I'm at home uh, the reasons why we don't have um, theatres at Arara Hospital. Who is stealing what? Where is the money going? All that kind of uh, stuff uh, is what we need in order to make the correct decisions in how we interact with public life and how we interact with, with public officials. So if you look at, uh, at, at, at the situation that we have at the moment, I just came out of Chikurubi prison. All prisoners in Chikurubi, except those who are coming to court, don't have masks, this mask, six to eight cents. Danish Mbuaya and his team wanted to sell, they were selling this for 24 US dollars, something that costs six to eight cents. And that's the reason why prisoners don't have masks, because the money is being looted. 
When my doctor came, Dr. Nyasha Maborege, came to see me and wanted to check my high blood pressure, the prison hospital does not have a high blood pressure checking machine. And yet, Chikurubi has got over 2,500 prisoners who are there. Uh, we were living in a cell with, uh, with uh, we were living in a cell about 40 to 44 people per prison cell. And yet those prison cells are meant for 16 inmates. Again, it points to the corruption that's taking place, that has been taking place and uh, that has been superintended by ZANU-PF, uh, resulting in them failing to construct more pri prisons. So they will just pick you in that prison, colonial prison that was left by, by, by the colonial government. So it's, it's important for journalists to understand that our problems that we face as a country today, they start from, number one, the failure to comply with, uh, with the Constitution. I talk a lot about reforms because that is the language that people use. But in essence, what we need is for ZANU PF to simply comply with the Constitution. Stop looting money that is meant for public uh, institutions. Once they start complying with the Constitution, then there's no need for all this talk about, about dialogue. Once they stop looting, there's no need for us to even talk about why hospitals have been shut down, because hospitals will start functioning again. And that is rooted in the stuff that Dumisar and his team are about to start doing now. They've been doing it for years, but they're starting to do it in a different format which is investigative journalism. I think once we have government officials and public officials who understand that there are journalists out there whose main job is nothing but just to dig at, at, uh, at, um, at, at what's happening uh, in public life, you will start to see a shift. You will start to see people taking things seriously. When I was thrown into Chikurubi prison, one of the things that the president said to someone who's a government minister was that I had crossed the line, I had insulted his family, I had um, tainted uh, his name, and yet I had done none of those things. I simply told the truth. If the truth meant that the president's name was going to be tainted, so be it. But we should not be afraid of telling the truth because I will be thrown into prison. That's the nature of the work that we chose as journalists, more so as investigative journalists, because we are going to be uncovering a lot of road uh, in regards to what's happening in our country. If you look at how, how everything has collapsed in our country, it comes back to just one thing. If we have more investigative journalism, you will see institutions will start working properly. Look at his bubble. We got, we, we inherited his bubble with, uh, was it 19 or 20 planes? 18. 18 planes, yeah. Today it is one plane which is flying. Again, it's looting. If, 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 if we start digging and start putting out the names that this is what so and so took, even those that looted 10 years ago, we still have a responsibility to reflect on what happened and, and where the money was taken to. And um, as you saw with the drugs issue, you know, these days it's so easy to trace money. I can tell you that uh, some of the money that is being looted is in Bank One in, in Mauritius. These things are easy uh, to, 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 to find out, but you need a dedicated team, a, a team that is able to uh, withstand the pressures. That's why I'm happy with what the Honorable Member of Parliament has said. Uh, we need your support. You need to support these guys. And, and once we, 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 they get that kind of support, you know, our country will start to thrive. Because I don't want to be known as somebody who's looted any money. And uh, if, if Dumizan and the team can prove that I've done so, uh, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a public official, then I need to leave office. And, but you can see how long it took for Nangabwa to finally let go of his nephew, uh, Obedal Moyo. He, he wouldn't let go of that guy because there was no culture uh, of the media being dogged. I mean, there's 
know? There are other newspapers like Daily News, they didn't even bother to cover the story. You know, they were not even covering the story, and yet it was like the story that was being covered by Namibian newspapers, South African newspapers, you know. So that's why I'm happy that you guys have started this, and I wish you well. And uh, I look forward to having the you on the sidelines. You know, it's, it's, it's a great thing, and congratulations. Thank you. Excellent.